Welcome back to 8701. So in this lecture, we open a new chapter, the weak interaction. So we are one by one adding together the components we need in order to describe all elementary particles and their interaction. So now we're adding the third form of interaction after the QED and QCD, we enter into the discussion of the weak interaction. So let's have a look at the standard model. So we discussed gluons and QCD, and we saw that gluons couple to themselves and also to all quarks because they carry a charge under the under QCD, a color charge. We have also discussed the photon and seen that the photon, they do not couple to themselves, but they couple to all charged elementary particles. Those are the metaparticles, the fermions. The photon also couples to the W boson because it's electrically charged. So now what we want to do in this next chapter, I want to fully understand the W and the Z boson. And we will see that they couple to all metaparticles. And we will also discuss how they might couple to themselves, or the Z boson couples to the W boson. So that's the story of this entire chapter, and we'll take it one by one. As an introduction, we start with the Feynman rules. So having the Feynman rules in place and the cookbooks, the recipe in order to calculate decays and scattering processes, this is all we need in order to get moving. Okay. So we can, for example, look at this vertex here or this, this uh, um, component of a Feynman diagram. And what we need to analyze this is the propagator for the W and Z boson and the vertex vector. So <clears throat> this vertex vector now looks a little bit more complicated um, than for QED and QCD because the W boson and the Z boson, they carry mass. Okay, so we have those additional factors, Q square minus M square, and this Q square over M square term as well. Okay. Um, one interesting fact about this vertex factor is what happens now if Q square is much, much smaller than M square, right? Basically get rid of those components here and we find a vertex factor which looks similar uh, to the one we have in QED. However, there's no one over Q square term, but just in one over M square term, which is constant. So we will see that we can describe this in the context of the Fermi theory which is a low energy approximation of the full theory of, of weak interaction. It's kind of an interesting concept um, and it extends to the entire understanding of the standard model. It might be that our standard model, you know, when we have all the packages together, describes a lower energy approximation of a more complex, a more uh, holistic theory, um, which we then can discuss under the concept of um, a, a grand unified theory, uh, maybe with a symmetry group, which is embedding the symmetry groups we need for QED, QCD, and the weak interaction. All right, but that's a, a, a side remark. Uh, so we, we, we look at the Fermi theory a little bit more later. Um, the vertex factor itself, describing the vertex here, is given here for the W and W boson and also for the Z boson. And it looks a little bit more complicated than the vertex factors we have seen so far. <coughs> so what you note is that there is a, a parameter which uh, is associated to the strength of the interaction, um, but there's and the gamma matrix, but there's also this term here, which has two components. There's a one and there's a gamma five matrix. All right, we have talked about gamma, gamma five matrix already. Um, we can later identify those as uh, indiv indiv individual currents are coupling to vector uh, vector current and an axial current. So this looks even more complicated now for the Z boson because here we have not just numbers of one, but um, an additional factor. Um, this factor CV is a vector coupling and it's specific for each fermion. So each fermion has one of those constants. And there's a second part of a package or set of constants for the axial current. Um, you have a second parameter here, which is the strength of the coupling of the Z boson. 
So at this point, we just take this for granted and we can do our calculations. And on the next slide, I'm going to explain to you what the corresponding numbers are, what those values are for those parameters CV and CA. Um, later, we will see how it comes to this more complicated structure and why there is a vector and why there is an actual axial, axial current in the weak interaction. But for now, we just take this for granted and we just take this as, as a recipe. So now for the neutral, so we just have seen that this is the vertex vector. And here for all fermions, we list what these values are for CV and CA. What you can see is, <coughs> okay, for the, for the neutrinos, um, the factor is one half, both for CV and for CA. And for the charged leptons and, uh, and, and, uh, and quarks, there is an even more complicated term here, which includes the new parameter sine square theta w. The value of this is 28 degrees. Sine square theta w is 0.231. Um, as a little bit of a preview here already, the fact that there is this new parameter and an angle involved leads to, or can be explained later, uh, by the fact that the weak interaction is actually a um, result of a mixing between an original weak interaction and QED. So there is a mixing going on. In other, in other words, the, the Z boson itself is a mixture between the thing which call, couples to the weak part of the particles and a part which couples to the uh, electrically charged part of the particles. And you see that that's why there is where the simple factor for the neutrinos who are electrically neutral um, and a more complicated term here for the electrically charged particles. And you see that this is the electric charge here, or two times the electric charge of the particles. Okay, um, but for now, those are all just constants and recipes to be used. One additional word on the history <coughs> of the neutral charge of the neutral weak current is given here. Um, so in the 60s and 70s, the standard model was slowly developed a little bit more slowly than we do in this class here. And there was an hypothesis that there has to be something like a, a neutral current somewhere, but it has never been observed in nature. And so with, <clears throat> with bubble chamber, specifically the one Gargamel at CERN, one was able to actually see those, see virtual, I mean, really see uh, those interactions for the first time. And the first pictures that have been taken in the 1970s, 1973, and this picture here illustrates, I will explain this in a second, um, illustrates the interaction of a neutrino coming in into the bubble chamber, making an interaction with an electron and then scattering off, kicking off the electron. Um, so what you see here is this incoming, this is indeed an anti-neutrino, kicking off an electron, see the electron here. Um, the neutrino goes off undetected, just disappears. Um, you see here the electron. And then there's also two photons, one photon here, let's see the different color, and one photon here, causing an electron positron um, pair, and the second photon here doing the very same thing. And you can see those particles here, it's here, and there's a little cringle here as well. So this is a bubble chamber, with a bubble chamber picture. We'll talk about bubble chambers very briefly later in the lecture as well. Um, but they're very extremely important and useful tools in order to illustrate, illustrate, to visualize um, and measure uh, particle interaction. All right, so much to the introduction, and we'll continue now um, with the next lecture on talking about this mixture, this electroweak mixture. In the